हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू स्टडी मेक एजुकेशन चैनल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन फॉर मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग विद सॉल्यूशन पार्ट टेन सो लेट्स बिगिन आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज विच हैज हाइएस्ट कैलोरिफिक वैल्यू ऑप्शन ए डीजल ऑयल ऑप्शन बी बेनजीन ऑप्शन सी अल्कोहल एंड ऑप्शन डी पेट्रोल वेल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अवर राइट आंसर इज हियर पेट्रोल Now let's discuss what are the calorific value of diesel benzene alcohol and petrol. So for petrol the calorific value is 48000 kJ per kg. Always remember for petrol the value of calorific value is 48000 kJ per kg and for diesel the calorific value is 44800 kJ per kg. always remember this value and for benzene the calorific value is 42216 kJ per kg and for alcohol the calorific value is 30000 kJ per kg always remember these values and another information which is very very important for exam point of view is gasohol gasohol is made is consist of is mainly the composition of gasohol are 10% is ethanol and 19% is gasoline so always remember gasohol is made from ethanol and gasoline very very important for exam point of view now let's move to the next uh, question our next question is creep in a belt drive is due to option a material of the belt option b larger size of the driver pulley option c uneven extension and contraction due to wearing section option d material of the pulley well in this question option a material of the belt option b larger size of the driver pulley and option d material of the pulley are not the right answer and option c uneven extension and contraction due to wearing tension which is our right answer let's focus on the question creep in a belt drive is due to on even extension contraction due to wearing tension now let's discuss what is the meaning of creep and fatigue first of all so let's discuss about creep when a part is subjected to a constant stress always remember for creep there is a constant stress at high temperature for a long period of time i repeat for a long period of time it will undergo a slow and permanent deformation which is known as creep and the property of creep is designed in internal combustion engines then boilers and turbines now internal combustion engine turbine and boiler are working with high temperature so as per definition when a part is subjected to constant stress with high temperature for a long period of time it will undergo a slow and permanent deformation is known as creep now let's discuss about fatigue now fatigue when a material is subjected to repeated stress for fatigue we must remember the repeated stress word and it fails at stress below the yield point stress this phenomenon is known as fatigue now what is yield point over here so as we can see the definition a yield point or yield strength is the material property as the stress at which material begins to deform plastically i repeat the definition as the stress at which the material begins to deform plastically is known as yield point so the fatigue is the property which is considered in designing of shaft designing of connecting rod then spring and gear etc so always remember this detail very very important for exam point of view now let's move to the next important question very very important question a mechanism is an assemblage of or option r a three links option b four links or more than four links option d two links and option c none of the three mention here first of all let's focus on the question again a mechanism is an assemblage of or right answer is b four links or more than four links 
now what is the meaning of mechanism first of all mechanism is defined as when one of the link of kinematic chain is fixed then chain is known as me mechanism now what is the meaning of me kinematic chain so before discussion of a kinematic chain over here we have another detail that is typewriter and engine indicator well typewriter and engine indicator both are example of mechanism they are not machine but they are mechanism this is also very very important mcq for example point of view remember now kinematic chain so let's see kinematic chain defined as a combination of kinematic pair join in a such a way that each link form a part of two pair always remember this word each link form a part of two pair now what is given in definition and the relative motion between the link is completely or successfully constrained motion so let's see the example of this kinematic chain that crankshaft of an engine crankshaft of an engine is the form of kinematic pair with the bearing which are fixed in a pair okay the connecting rod with the crank forms a second kinematic pair right and the piston with the connecting rod form a third pair okay and the piston with a cylinder form a fourth pair so the total combination of this link is known as kinematic chain the first second third and fourth this combination is known as kinematic chain now let's discuss about kinematic pair well the two links or elements of machine when in contact with each other are said to form a pair if the relative motion between them is completely or successfully constrained then this type of arrangement or pair is known as kinematic pair now let's discuss what is the meaning of completely constrained motion and successfully constrained motion and incompletely constrained motion first of all let's discuss completely constrained motion so let me zoom over here when the motion between a pair is limited to a definite direction irrespective of the direction of force applied then this type of motion is known as completely constrained motion in which the pair is limited to definite direction irrespective of the direction of the applied force this type of motion is known as completely constrained motion and for example piston and cylinder form a pair in a steam engine the motion of piston is limited to definite direction it will only reciprocate relative to the cylinder irrespective of the applied force or irrespective of direction of the motion of the crank so this is the perfect example of completely constrained motion now let's discuss about successfully constrained motion when the motion between the element forming a pair is such that the constrained motion is not complete by itself but by means of other external force that this type of motion is known as successfully constrained motion in this motion it means successfully constrained motion means uh, it is not complete by itself but by some external force so this type of motion is known as successfully constrained motion and the example is the motion of ic engine valve and the piston reciprocating inside an engine cylinder are the example of successfully constrained motion now let discuss about incompletely constrained motion so what is given let's see when a motion between a pair can take place in more than one direction i repeat in more than one direction then the motion call is incompletely constrained motion so let's see an example so we have some clear uh, idea about incompletely constrained motion for example a circular bar a circular bar in a circular hole so first of all let's draw some uh, circular hole so we have some clear idea this is our circular bar 
and we have a circular hole so it has sliding as well as turning motion so what is given in example for a circular bar in a circular hole is an example of incompletely constrained motion it may either rotate or slide in hole this uh, well this is the motion of ro rotate and this the bar is rotated on its own axis so a circular bar has two type of motion one is it will rotate on its own axis and it will also slide on its axis so it has more than one direction it will take place the motion when a motion between a pair, pair can take place in more than one direction then this type of motion is known as incompletely constrained motion so we have circular bar in a circular hole is an example of incompletely constrained motion as it may either rotate or slide in hole this both motion have no relation between the other no relationship with other okay so this type of motion is known as incompletely constrained motion now let's move to the next uh, important question a 100 cc first of all cc means cubic centimeter always remember cubic centimeter now a 100 cc ic internal combustion engine means that its option a clearance volume is 100 cc option b clearance plus swept volume is 100 cc option d swept volume is 100 cc and option c swept minus clearance volume is 100 cc so first of all our right answer is over here option b that is clearance plus swept volume is 100 cc now let's see what is given in clearance volume what is the meaning of clearance volume clearance volume is a volume between the cylinder head and the piston when the piston is at the top dead center so let's discuss a rough uh, diagram of piston and so this is our head we have a crank and a connecting rod with piston so we have this gap which is known as clearance volume and if the position of piston inside the cylinder as we can see in this diagram the above portion is our head and this uh, is our piston with connecting rod so whatever the volume given here which is known as swept volume swept volume and whatever the volume uh, in uh, this diagram over this line which is it is known as clearance volume i think we have some clear idea about clearance volume and swept volume now let's see the definition for a swept volume swept volume is the volume through which a piston moves when it makes a stroke in an engine cylinder so this is our stroke volume and at right side we have clearance volume now let's move to the compression ratio compression ratio r it is the ratio of volume above the piston at bdc bdc means bottom dead center and tdc tdc means top dead center well the compression ratio is the ratio of volume above the piston at bdc and volume above the piston at tdc so as we can c over here r is equal to vc plus vs divided by vc so clearance volume plus set volume divided by clearance volume now the let's see the calculation part swap volume is we can find the swap volume with the help of this equation pi by 4 into d square l well where l is the stroke 2 into rho or we can say rho is here crank radius so we can write over here l is equal to twice r or twice rho 
फिर रो इज द क्रैंक साफ्ट रेडियस ऑलवेज रिमेंबर न वेन इफ वी इंक्रीज द कंप्रेशन रेशियो इट विल इंक्रीज द थर्मल एफिशियंसी एंड कंप्रेशन इज लिमिटेड बाई द नॉक लिमिट ना आई थिंक वी हैव सम क्लियर आइडिया अबाउट कंप्रेशन रेशियो एंड स्वैप वॉल्यूम एंड क्लियरेंस वॉल्यूम लेट्स डिस्कस द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन ई डी एम टूल इलेक्ट्रो डिस्चार्ज मशीनिंग प्रोसेस द टूल इज मेड ऑफ ऑप्शन ए टंगस्टन कार्बाइड ऑप्शन बी डायमंड ऑप्शन सी ब्रास एंड ऑप्शन डी स्टेनलेस स्टील वेल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्टेनलेस स्टील इज ऑल्सो नोन एज आइनॉक्स स्टील आइनॉक्स स्टील इट इज ऑल्सो स्टेनलेस स्टील इज ऑल्सो नोन एज हाई स्ट्रेंथ स्टील एंड स्टेनलेस स्टील इज मेड स्टेनलेस स्टील इज अ कॉम्पोजिशन द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ स्टेनलेस स्टील इज टेन परसेंटेज क्रोमियम टेन परसेंटेज क्रोमियम एंड रिमेनिंग एंड आयन सो एज वी नो द क्रोमियम हैज हाइएस्ट द क्रोमियम हैज क्रोजन रेजिस्टेंस प्रॉपर्टी सो स्टेनलेस स्टील इज मेड बाय क्रोमियम टेन परसेंटेज एंड रिमेनिंग आयन वेल ब्रास ब्रास इज मेड बाय द ब्रास इज अ कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ कॉपर प्लस जिंक ऑलवेज रिमेंबर एंड ब्रॉन्ज ब्रॉन्ज इज अ कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ कॉपर प्लस टीन ऑलवेज रिमेंबर द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्रॉन्ज एंड कॉपर Now let's discuss the diamond. Diamond is a crystalline material, well, in which uh, the atoms are arranged in a regular pattern in definite manner. Uh, there is also another important MCQ from Mesomorphous, which is light, uh, which is slightly different from a diamond. Mesomorphous means in which atoms, uh, some atoms are arranged in regular pattern. while remaining atoms are not arranged in definite manner so the example of mesomorphous is known as mica mica is example of mesomorphous and another structure is amorphous amorphous material so amorphous in in amorphous material the atoms are arranged in a chaotically manner chaotically means atoms are not arranged in a definite order or in regular pattern and the example of amorphous material is glass these details are very very important for exam point of view now let's discuss remaining option tungsten carbide let's focus on the question again what is given in the question in edm tool is made of our right answer is tungsten carbide now carbide in carbide the binding material is cobalt always remember cobalt is the binding material of carbide tool in edm tool is made of our right answer is tungsten carbide now let's move to the next uh, question in four stroke engine a working cycle completes in following revolution of crank shaft so our options are a2 option b3 option c4 and option d1 now let's focus the question again in four stroke engine a working cycle completes in following revolution of crank shaft so our right answer over here is 2 for four stroke the right answer is 2 now let's move to the next uh, question very very interesting question a universal joint is an example of option a rolling pair option b lower pair option c sliding pair and option d higher pair well first of all our right answer over here is lower pair so let us discuss what is lower pair what is higher pair what is rolling pair and what is sliding pair we will start we will start from lower pair lower pair means when the two element of a pair have surface contact when relative motion take place and the surface of one element slide over the surface of other element this type of pair is known as lower pair so it will be seen in sliding pair turning pair 
and screw pair and this type of pair is example of lower pair now let's discuss about higher pair when the two element of pair have a line or a point contact when relative motion take place and motion between the two element is partly by turning and partly by sliding now this pair is known as higher pair now let's see the example of higher pair friction disc tooth gearing belt and rope drive ball and roller bearing cam and follower are the example of higher pair always remember now let's discuss about rolling pair rolling pair means when the two element of a pair connect in such a way that one roll over the another fixed link the pair is known as rolling pair always remember one roll over the fixed another link which is known as rolling pair and example is roller bearing where it is the example of rolling pair well ball and roller bearing which is example of rolling pair and for sliding pair let's see what is the sliding pair when the two element of a pair are connect in a such a way that one can only slide relative to other the pair is known as sliding pair now let's see the example of sliding pair so what is given first of all the piston and cylinder cross head and guides of reciprocating steam engine ram and its guide and tail stroke on the lathe bed in uh, the tail stroke on the lathe means the tail stroke slide relative to the lathe bed and in the case of saper the ram slide over the gu like guides so it is also the example of our uh, sliding pair and piston in cylinder piston reciprocate inside the cylinder so it is also the example of sliding pair and for cross head and guide of reciprocating steam engine which is also an example of sliding pair in below figure we have a diagram of universal joint so this is the figure for bottom view of an automobile this is our universal joint at right side this is also a figure of universal joint now we have some clear idea for this uh, joints now let's move to the next uh, question we have a question graphical method to find force acting on a single point cutting tool single point cutting tool is also known also write sometimes spct now let's focus on the question what is given graphical method to find force acting on a single point cutting tool is known as our option r a merchant circle diagram option c none of the three mentioned here option b euler circle diagram and option d newton circle diagram so let's see diagram in short venn diagram venn diagram is not given the option but it is very important for example point of view venn diagram gives the some portion of the two different categories and for euler diagram euler diagrams consist of simple closed shape in a two dimensional plane that each depict a set or category as we can see here euler diagram describe the separate of uh, each category or uh, the exact amount of each category we can say now let's move to the mohr circle method mohr circle here we have the diagram of mohr circle for inclined plane but we will discuss this uh, mohr circle in our next video in detail but right now for exam point of view we must remember this detail very very important for for mcq that is mohr circle is a graphical method of finding normal tangential and resultant stress on inclined plane i repeat this uh, lines because very very important for example point of view mohr circle is a graphical method of finding the normal tangential and resultant stress on inclined plane always remember now let's see the very very important term merchant circle diagram over here we have tool 
cheap and our work piece in our next video we will discuss in details about merchant circle diagram but for example point of view multiple choice question let's see very quickly the merchant circle diagram is constructed to analysis of cutting force acting during orthogonal two dimensional cutting of work piece uh, the scientist named ernest and merchant do this scientific analysis for the first time in 1941 and give the following relation 5 is equal to pi by 4 minus half in bracket lambda minus alpha in this equation 5 is known as shear angle shear angle and lambda is known as our frictional angle frictional angle and alpha alpha is known as rack angle r a c k rack angle let me clear all this first of all alpha is known as rack angle okay now it is convenient to determine the various force and angles let's see what is the important of this merchant circle diagram for example point of view for establishing the relationship between measurable and actual forces merchant circle diagram will be used i repeat for measurable and actual forces merchant circle diagram will be used so now let's focus on the question again what is given in the question graphical method to find force acting on a single point cutting tool is known as our right answer is a merchant circle diagram a is our right answer now let's move to the next uh, detail which of the following are heat treatment process option a normalizing option b annealing option c hardening and quenching and option d all of the above so first of all our right answer is d all of the above d is our right answer because annealing or normalizing hardening quenching quenching is a part of hardening so all of the all the three process are heat treatment process now let's see one by one for normalizing it is apply cable to casting and forging very very important details for example point of view remember normalizing is applicable for castings and forgings and in normalizing it is required heating the steels at 30 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius above upper critical temperature for hypoeutectoid steel now hypoeutectoid means the iron carbon alloy has carbon percentage below or less than 0.8 percentage that is known as hypoeutectoid steel i repeat uh, in uh, normalizing in normalizing heating the steel at 30 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius above upper critical temperature for hypoeutectoid steel and acm line for hypoeutectoid steel now for hypoeutectoid steel as we know the carbon percentage is more than 0.8 percentage okay and this steals up to keep up to 50 minutes at this temperature and cools in steel air not in a furnace but cools in steel air which is known as normalizing process acm lines means it is uh, same like 32 to 30 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius above the lower critical temperature for hyperutectoid steel now annealing annealing mainly consist of uh, this process full annealing process annealing spherodizing then uh, we have also another another information for uh, annealing that is diffusion annealing okay now let's discuss one by one all this annealing process first of all full annealing what is the meaning of full annealing full annealing is used to soft the material it is also used to refine the grain structure of material and it is also used to relieve the stress and to remove the trap gas uh, from the metal in this process heating the steel it is required to heating the steel at 30 degrees 
Celsius to 50 degree Celsius above upper critical temperature for hypoeudectoid steel and 32 degree 36 degree Celsius to 50 degree Celsius below lower critical temperature ACM line for hyper eudectoid steel and cool slowly in furnace in a full annealing it will uh, the steel cools in slowly in furnace while in normalizing the steel cools in steel air always remember now let's discuss about process annealing one more thing for a full annealing in full annealing it is used to it is used to make uh, to make a material soft it is also used to refine grain structure and also used to relieve stress and also used to remove trap gas from the metal always remember now let's discuss about process annealing process annealing means low temperature it is also known as low temperature heat treatment process uh, subcritical process and it is, it is used to increase the machinability of, process, of the metal and heating the steel in, in this uh, process annealing it is required to steal heat below the lower critical temperature and cool slowly remember these details in spherodizing spherodizing annealing process it is applicable or it is applied to high carbon tool steel always remember very very important for exam point of view spherodizing annealing process is applicable to high carbon tool steel which is difficult to machine in which heating of the steel above lower critical temperature and the temperature range is 730 degree celsius to 770 degree celsius and cool slowly to a temperature of 600 degree celsius always remember for spirodizing this is the range for a particular temperature in this treatment machinability increase but hardness and tensile strength both will decrease so very very important uh, details we have for spirodizing now let's discuss the remaining details for annealing so for annealing we have diffusion annealing process it is also known as homogeneation process it mainly used for an ingots ingots let's me let, let me draw some uh, diagram for to clear about ingots blooms and billets so first of all we have ingot ingot is uh, known also known as large casting large casting from ingot blooms uh, from ingot ingot convert into blooms and blooms convert into billets so remember ingots blooms and billets ingot blooms and billets so let's focus on the diffusion annealing diffusion annealing is also known as homogeneation it mainly used for an ingots a piece of relatively pure material usually metal that is cast into shape suitable for further processing so this is the definition of ingots now it is a uh, uh, diffusion annealing is used for large casting and after diffusion annealing the casting undergo the full annealing process to improve their grain structure heating the steel at high temperature up to 1100 degrees celsius to 1200 degrees celsius for 8 to 12 hours i repeat for 8 to 12 hour and cool 800 degrees celsius to 850 degrees celsius inside the furnace for a period of 6 to 8 hours and it is further cool in room temperature so very very important process diffusion annealing now last is hardening so let's discuss about hardening in hardening it is required heating the steel at 30 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius above upper critical temperature for hypoeutectoid steel 
now we must know what is hypoiterated steel and what is hypoiterated steel so for hypoiterated steel and 30 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius below lower critical temperature acm line for hypoiterated steel and cool slowly cool suddenly very very important for hardening cool suddenly in cooling medium like uh, water like oil so these are the medium for uh, cooling su suddenly and this method is known as quenching so let's focus on the question again so we have some clear idea which of the following are heat treatment process or option r normaling option b annealing option b hardening and quenching quenching is a process of hardening and d or of the above so our answer is d or of the above we have some important details that we miss here so let discuss it well serializing it is not a heat treatment process but it is a coating process in serializing means zinc diffusion process very very important for example point of view remember in galvanizing it is a process of coating zinc by hot dipping now what is the meaning of hot dipping a hot dipping means galvanizing is a form hot dip galvanization is form of galvanization and it is the process of coating zinc it is the process of coating zinc on iron and steel with layer of zinc by immersing the metal in a bath of molten zinc very very important details in a bath of molten zinc at a temperature around 840 degree fahrenheit or 449 degree celsius now what is the equation of uh, celsius into fahrenheit conversion c is equal to 5 divided by 9 in bracket f minus 32 very very important equation this are the additional information so remember so don't confuse uh, between serializing spherodizing and galvanizing they are different they have different meaning serializing galvanizing and spherodizing so don't confuse between these details now let's move well this is the end of the video so to be continued we will continue to upload next video so please press the like button if you like the content given in this video and also give the comments because your feedbacks are very very important for us share this video with your friend likes mechanical automobile and mechatronics don't forget to subscribe this channel and to join with us for next video please subscribe this channel we are also available on facebook twitter linkedin and Google Plus. If you have any query and suggestion, then feel free to contact us on studymakeeducation at the gmail dot com. Thank you and have a good time.